So hello, welcome again today. Um, we've got a we've got a we've got a great case here of a tooth which might feel quite overwhelming to the vast majority of dentists and endodontists. And um, this case has got everything. It's got um, it's got a, a fractured crown, um, so so poor poor prognosis or questionable. Um, restorability. It's a reroute treatment, and it's also a, uh, a fractured instrument removal case as well. So I suppose um, the, the 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 problem with this case is it's just got so much going on with it that sometimes you can just feel so overwhelmed as a dentist with uh, with teeth like this, and um, you might think to yourself, well, it's just got so much going uh, going against this tooth. I don't really know what I'm doing. It's probably best. Um, removing the tooth so I suppose in in most cases that 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 would be um, uh, you know a, a reasonable expectation of your own skills and and you just think yeah well I'll just have it out but I suppose um, this case is a, a really perfect demonstration of um, just holding your nerve thinking about uh, principles and obviously consent with the patients as well. So if we look at the, the x-ray here, this is from the endodontic consultation. And, and don't forget, um, most of the time I will do a consultation and then I will rebook the patient in for endodontic treatment. Um, mainly because, um, I mean, it might sound, sound obvious, but mainly because um, sometimes we get consultations in and uh, it's not the correct diagnosis. So imagine booking a big two hour appointment and, it, and you're not going ahead with treatment. That wouldn't be very cost effective for the practice and yourself. But also it's for consent. It gives patients kind of that legal time to make sure they understand all the, um, the risks and the benefits and they can go away and have a think about it and come back. So, we look at the x-ray that was taken here and we can see that there's a, a full coverage crown. We've got a reroute treatment. It's short of the radiographic apex, although that's not completely clear on the x-ray here where the apex is. And also there's what, what seems to be a fractured instrument. But when the patient attended, um, they attended with the crown in their hand. Okay, so they've, um, the, the crown was sound at the consultation, but um, the, 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 the crown was, uh, was fractured off. And then when we looked inside the mouth, the, 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 the tooth or the remaining tooth structure was of questionable prognosis. So it was pretty much at the gum line other than a few little millimeters here and there. And that is a, um, a consideration you need to take on yourself and you need to have a conversation with the patient because um, most of my endodontic treatments, I'm not finally restoring myself. These are external or internal referrals. I'll do the root canal, get sent back to the dentist, and then they will do the definitive restoration. Um, so usually with cases like this, if I think the, uh, the, the, the prognosis is questionable, I will temporize the tooth. I will um, take a couple of photos and send a letter off to the referring dentist or speak to the referring dentist in practice and say, are you happy to restore this? In this case, I made a command decision. I felt like this tooth was restorable. I know the patient was having extensive treatment and she didn't want uh, an implant and she was happy for me to uh, restore the tooth. So I took a slight chance there, but um, as you'll see at the end, um, you can we'll see that the, the tooth it was restorable and I was, and I was quite happy with that. So the video starts off with me rubber dam on and obviously um, I've had to use like uh, this kind of clamp here which is gonna clamp around the tooth and I'm using a liquid dam as well because it's difficult for me to seal this because the tooth is so badly broken down. And I'm just slowly investigating uh, the, the the GP that is uh, which is showing here with a DG endodontic probe. And this is this is a um, an end. This is a normal probe which is a little bit longer than usual. So it's a really really useful tool to have. And as I remove the GP, I'm just trying to sort of see how well this GP is well packed because sometimes you have GP and it is quite. Um, uh, it's it's quite um sort of well compact and you pick it out in in pieces and sometimes it just removed in one 
I know it's not getting removed easy, so I'm going to use the sort of twist and pull technique with the H file. So I'm going to twist the, the hand file into the GP and pull out. And the best thing to happen here is the whole GP to pull out in one, but it doesn't. So I know that I'm going to have got, got a little bit of a, um, um, a little bit of a fight on my hands with this GP. And it's a, kind of at this point when I'm thinking to myself, well, the, 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 the orifice of this tooth is possibly off center. So if we sort of draw a, um, a circle around the whole tooth structure here, we can see that the, um, the, the sort of orange circle here shows where the, the GP orifice, or the orifice is where the GP is. And it's kind of off center, isn't it? So if we kind of draw like a, like a line down the center of it, and when we think about um, canals that are off center, um, there's a really great paper called Krasn and Rankow, which kind of talks about um, uh, symmetry in, uh, in, 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 in canal morphology. So if we look at uh, this blue star here, we can kind of suggest that maybe um, the, um, there might be a second canal. And uh, it's it's important to note though, but th th this this might not be a, uh, an off center because the tooth is broken down, so the the sort of orientation of this tooth might be off. So what I'm going to do to kind of negotiate or, or sort of investigate if there's a second canal is I'm using these endo success tips. So this is these are specialized endodontic ultrasonic tips which go on a specialized unit. You can't use them on your chair, and it very 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 gently removes dentin. You, um, you know, you could use a fast hand piece in this case, but it just you just lose control and you can perforate and you can remove too much uh, too much dentin. So as we um, remove uh, this kind of dentin shelf, we can see that there is a second canal orifice. And, um, you know, this is a nice feeling, isn't it? Finding other canal morphology that's been missed. And then we're going to use these um, endo success tips just to further refine this access cavity and open up this second canal. The next thing we want to sort of work out is um, this extra canal. Does it join or does it have its own canal space? Um, so the, the first thing I'm going to do now is just get a size 10 K file and trying to move this K file down this palatal canal, this, this, this newly uh, found canal. And I can see that there's, it's, it's getting stuck. It isn't going all the way to the end. And I suspect that these two canals join. So once we suspect that these two canals join, I think the most important thing now to do is to remove the remaining GP. And, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the twist, twist, pull technique here. Um, just be careful because the H files are really, really easily um, fractured in this case, but I've never fractured one ever. And again, lots and lots of irrigants. Um, and and what a great thing about using um, this ultrasonic activator with retreats is it gets just rid of all the kind of debris that's created by slowly picking out GP because obviously we'd like to to think that we'd pull all the GP out, but it, it hardly ever happens if I'm honest with you. So so. All the way through this, I'm irrigating and I'm activating the irrigant, get it all nice and clean. And it's at this point I uh, have a little look and I'm thinking to myself, can I see a separated fragment here in the buccal canal? And I think that what I want to do is just open up the buccal um, canals, kind of expand it so I've got a little bit more eyes on here. Of course, what I've got to be careful of is I don't want to, um, uh, uh, to remove too much dentin. And, um, you know, maybe this point here, this is where I can see the end of this fractured instrument. It's really, really difficult to see. Um, sometimes it's blindly obvious. You get kind of like a bit of a glint of metal, but just here, I, I think maybe there's a fractured instrument and I'm thinking to myself, it's a little bit too far for me maybe to manually remove. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and bypass the instrument instead of removing it. So I'm just using this uh, size 10 D finder, making a small bend at the end, and I'm just slowly, slowly moving um, my D finder up to this point where the fraction instrument is um, to try and just get around it. And I look again, and I think maybe the fractured instrument has disappeared. And what I'm concerned about here is I've pushed this instrument further down apically. Um, so best thing to do is just take a little x-ray just to see if the instrument has moved further down and it hasn't. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the isthmus 
between the two canals just to see if we can visualize this um, this fractured instrument. The, 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 the thing about pushing the instrument further apically is it's got a real risk of it becoming blocked. And the further it goes down the isthmus, sorry, the further it goes down towards the apex, obviously the, the canal narrows. So if it drops into the apical uh, third, um, removing it and bypassing it then becomes incredibly, incredibly difficult. So what I'm doing here is I am using my endo success tips, the diamond tip ultrasonics to remove the dentin or expand the isthmus. I'm using lots and lots of irrigants. I'm lots, losing lots of lots of activation. So using my endo activator just to clean all that irrigant out. And, and I'm just periodically just looking down and just to see if I can see the, the fractured instrument. And you know, I've expanded this isthmus really, really, you know, quite significantly. And once we've irrigated and aspirated the irrigant, I still cannot see any sign of this fractured instrument. It's at this point I'm at a, a precipice with my decision making. And I think to myself, it's probably best that I do remove um, the, 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 the full isthmus completely. This is, um, this is a decision though to be made, not lightheartedly because don't forget the removal of dentin, the removal of tooth tissue can significantly weaken this tooth. So um, I, I suppose I, I didn't want to remove the isthmus, but I felt like I had no choice because I couldn't visualize the, um, the, the instrument at all. And what we find here is that once I've removed the isthmus completely, um, we, we, the, 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 the instrument's gone. So just by the act, of me activating, irrigating, and using ultrasonic tips down the uh, down the canal is remove this instrument. This instrument's just been sucked up by my uh, by my aspirator tip. And in fact, when we look at this later, I can actually see the fractured instrument here in in the uh, in, in the rubber dam, and I didn't notice that until I started commenting on this video. So. Um, the, um, the what we're trying to do now is we're trying to get patency and in, in fact when you look right down the center of this canal we can see there's a deep split in in the apical third which is really really tough to manage um so i've got a size 10k file i've made a little bend at the end and i just can't get a zero reading on my um, apex locator so i'm going to do lots of irrigants and then now i'm going to use a size 10 uh, d finder with a little bend at the end and what we're doing is we're, we're, we're sort of just slowly kind of feeling around um, for a little catch. And again, with a size 10, I cannot get down there. And I'm going to use now a size 8 D finder with a little bend at the end and a little bit of um, small movements back and two. We finally find paint C uh, win the buckle canal with this 8 D finder and we get the zero reading. Um, before you before you do pull this out, just give it a little bit bit of back into. Make sure you are for certain painting, um, and and the same protocol is uh, with uh, with the palatal canal. And we get painting in both, and then we're going to finish the uh, final shaping with a fifteen oh four and a twenty five variable high flex file. And it's just it's just the same protocol as 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 everything else, you know. Um, still, because the, uh, the, 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 the apical end is um, difficult, you just want to keep make sure you're irrigating and you're recapitulating with your, uh, with your size 10k files. And what we're ready for now is to take the comb fit radiograph. So we, uh, we pop the, the, the two size GP points in. So we're going to use a, a size 25 in the buckle and we're going to use a size 20 in the palatal. And you can see here that although it looks short on the radiographic apex, I am confident that this is actually at the end of the tooth. And we're going to do a final irrigation and then we're going to dry the canal with uh, some paper points and we know that the, um, the 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 sort of diameter of this is really really narrow so I'm going to not going to use the usual wave one gold paper points but these super super narrow tapered uh, paper points and then we're going to finally obturate with um, with a bioceramic I use this uh, if you're if you're a fan of the channel we use the uh, the one fill sealer with these visco tips 
and um, I know at, at some point I'm going to use a uh, I'm going to use a fiber post, so I'm not going to fill this um, bioceramic all the way up to the top because we know that we're going to just fill maybe the apical to mid third with this tooth, and um, it's really 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 tough to obturate a, a deep split and 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 magnification is worth its weight it's gold here um and of course when we're searing off the, the the gp to pull this out would be really really easy as well so we're kind of using like a a shearing force when we're pulling off the gp and i'm um, just gonna very 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 carefully just remove the excess because i need enough space in this tooth for us to fit uh, my fiber post and finally, we're just going to use these Mach 2 pluggers just to just to condense um, the uh, the GP down into uh, into the canal. Just be really really careful here. Don't want to pull anything out. And then finally, um, once you're using the Mach 2 pluggers again, I like to give it a good old push down to really really condense um, the 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 sealer and the GP into the apical third. And then. My protocol for fiber posts is I like to use this scotch bond. This scotch bond, um, you don't need to etch before you use it. If you imagine trying to etch and um, and um, um, wash out uh, such a deep uh, uh, access cavity, is it almost impossible? You know, even here, when I use the scotch bond, I've got to kind of wick out the, the remaining scotch bond. I don't want it to, uh, to sort of pull down there. And then I'm going to have to remove the liquid dam in this case now because... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a fiber post in uh, this this remaining cavity and then I'm going to use the resin um, uh, bonding to 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 build up not not only to bond the resin uh, the, the fiber post but also to build up the core of the the uh, the tooth itself so we're just going to place uh, real IX ultimate here a little bit get rid of the uh, the sort of tape lock, place the fiber post, and then we're just building it up really, really roughly. It doesn't really matter if the resin it looks a bit of a mess here because essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be uh, touching up this 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 core with with a with a with a fast hand piece. Um you know the 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 tooth is pretty much prepped. You just have to sort of follow the lines of what was there before essentially and overall it looks looks pretty nice now if i've got my super super critical hat on here there is a significant amount of extrusion um in the distal aspects of this tooth um i suppose on 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 one hand you could say that this is this is um this is something that you don't want to happen okay on on the other hand you could because you don't want it to happen because it could be like a um a source of irritation in the mouth um on the other hand you could kind of say that, that, that this is this is a kind of result you want with a bioceramic so say you were to use like a resin cement um sorry a resin sealer or something like tubular seal that can kind of irritate the tissues and you know there's an argument to say that eventually that this um, uh, the inflammation might be exacerbated by sealer that's been that's been pulled out, um, but I think in this case a bioceramic is really really uh, biocompatible. So I'm 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 not 100% happy that the bioceramic is 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 um, is squirted into periapical tissues, but I know that um, all of the little nooks and crannies, all the lateral canals are all being filled, and usually what happens is the bioceramic is resorbed over time. So overall, um, it's it's I think this is a fantastic result given the circumstances, given the fact that the tooth was um, had a very, very poor prognosis restorability wise. You know, it had a, a reroute treatment in it, it had a fractured file. And, you know, the patient gets to keep this tooth a little bit longer. Listen, if you have any criticisms about this case, if you have any questions about this case, as ever, I want you to um, comment in the comment section below. Let's spark a debate. Let's talk. If you don't agree with anything I've done today, please, please just message down below. And this is what dentistry is about. It's about different opinions. Nothing's really cut and dry in this job. And that's what makes it super interesting. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please, please uh, subscribe because it you know drives me to do it, to create more content. And I will see you in the next video.
Bye-bye.